Okay, so thank you, Dr. Moon, again. And uh, I will move the next speaker. Uh, next speaker is uh, Supiria Mishura. Uh, she is a senior project manager at Teach Aids, where she helps lead the development, maintenance, and the expansion of Teach Aids products. Uh, founded at Stanford and recognized as an innovation that will change the world by MIT Technology Review, Teach Aids is a non-profit social venture that creates breakthrough software to solve the persistent problems in HIV prevention. Used in more than 70 countries, Teach Aids provides the most effective HIV prevention software to educators, governments, and the NGOs around the world for free. With a background in behavioral health research and expertise in innovative applications of new technologies in preventive care, she has previously worked at Hope Lab and the Institute for Brain Potential and co-authored a handbook on the neurobiological basis for forming positive health habits. She holds a BAH and MA in psychology with a concentration in neuroscience from Stanford University. She is going to talk uh, today. The title would be Designing Culturally Appropriate Health Education. Uh, Dr. Michelle, please go ahead. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, can you create education that is easy to access, easy to spread around the world, and so it seems the advantages are that you could develop one item and use it everywhere. What I want to talk about today is the importance of customizing those, those materials to be appropriate for different communities in which you're doing work. So before I start, I wanted to show a video that I believe Keiko will be playing for me. Yes, okay. So, uh, here you are. So, can you stop your share? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Prevention of HIV. It begins with me. Hello, what can I do for you? Doctor, I've heard a lot about HIV, but I don't really understand what it is. Could you explain, please? Sure. It's a very serious health topic. HIV stands for this is the story. This is the story. This is the story of a breakthrough. Breakthrough in the global fight against HIV and AIDS. This is the story. This is the story. This is the story of a new approach. A new approach to prevention. Prevention. That outperforms anything else in the world. And is designed for those who need it the most. In their own language. In their own language. And respecting their culture taboos. This is the story of pedagogically grounded, pedagogically grounded. evidence-based software from Stanford University that in a few short years, a few short years, has become a movement of more than 100 NGOs and 30 nations and hundreds of volunteers, hundreds of volunteers from around the globe who have donated time, talents, and celebrity to the movement. This is the story of millions of boys and girls, men and women who, for the first time, know how to prevent HIV and AIDS. This is the story of Teach AIDS. But this story has just begun. Our vision is to provide this life-changing software free. Free. To everyone in the world who needs it. In the next five years. But we can't do that without your help. Without your help. Without your help. Because this story is also about you. And what you do right now. So there are more than 34 million people in the world infected with HIV, and 95% of those new infections are now in the developing world. But the problem is that the challenges of education in each of these countries can be vastly different. So when Teach AIDS began, we started our research in India, and we wanted to understand why, even though so much money had been spent on HIV education, it seemed like people still did not have a very good understanding of the disease. And so what we did is we did research and we realized that the, the link between these awareness campaigns 
and the knowledge gains was broken. So unlike, say, an anti-smoking campaign where people saw a billboard and they understood why smoking damaged their lungs, with HIV, people didn't understand why the behaviors that they were being asked to do or not do impacted their ability to get infected with the virus. So what we decided to do was to do our own study in India to see if we were seeing these same issues. And what we discovered was in a study in Delhi, in one of a you know, major city, in a college, with students who you would expect to already know the basics of HIV transmission, these students still didn't understand the fundamentals, and they still said that they had a lot of questions. And the number one question we saw was whether or not there's a cure for HIV. Now, there is no cure for HIV, so the fact that these students didn't even have this basic knowledge suggested that there was a clear absence of um, you know, knowledge retention being completed by the information they were receiving. Furthermore, the students we spoke with said that they really wanted more information. So our question was, what is being done right now and how can we change that? Many educational campaigns used to rely on billboards or commercials. And with these type of awareness campaigns, you have limited space or limited time. A commercial may only be 30 seconds long. And so what you were getting is bits of pieces of information. You get a billboard telling you that you should wear a condom and a commercial telling you you could get HIV from blood and getting these bits of pieces of information, but that would be like learning how to drive and getting told from a billboard how to use a steering wheel and from a commercial how to use a brake. And you're getting all this different information and you can't make the connection. So we wanted to understand how can we provide a different way of learning in which students could actually understand the biology behind HIV so that they could understand what the behaviors meant if they did or didn't do them. So what we focused on was creating what is called in education research, a coherent conception. So first we explained how viruses work. Then we explained specifically how the HIV virus works. We explained which fluids it's transmitted through, which fluids it's not transmitted through, what parts of the body it must be um, transmitted through. And through that, then we explain to the student the behaviors that may or may not impact their ability to get HIV. So when you speak to a student, you can say, can you get HIV from blood? And they'll say, yes, yes, I know that. You can get HIV from blood. But then when you would ask them, how do you get HIV from blood? They wouldn't be able to answer. You would ask, can you get HIV from touching blood? Can you get HIV from ingesting blood? And these basic things that you would think they would take for common, that perhaps all of us take for common, they just didn't know. So by changing how we teach about HIV and going back to the basics of the biology, we realized we could really change how people understand and how they can protect themselves. Next, we wanted to understand how to make people comfortable. So now that we have the information, how do you present it in a way that is accessible, especially in a place like India where it's very inappropriate to talk about some of these topics. Usually talking about HIV means talking about sex and drugs and, you know, death and topics that people are not very comfortable with. And so we said, how can we decouple this education from sex education and really just impart the biological components? So if you look at this image, there is an spectrum. On the bottom left, what you see is stick figures, which may be very comfortable, but, sorry, bottom right, which may be very comfortable, but you don't understand what they're doing. And then in the upper left corner, you have the type of images that we would see in our medical textbooks. But these images make people very uncomfortable. So we need to figure out how we can maximize both the clarity of the images while still keeping people comfortable. And so here you see in this upper left corner what was an image used from standard North American textbooks of a child delivery. And people were not comfortable with the fact that the bottom half of the body was exposed. So instead, through animation, we were able to first show a pregnant woman and then show her holding the child in her arms. And in this way, we were still able to convey the same idea of delivering a child without making people as com uncomfortable with the images. And then again, going back to India, um, when we want to talk about certain behaviors in India, people don't talk about even things like kissing. Even in the mainstream movies, they do not typically use scenes where people, two people are kissing on screen. So we borrowed from Bollywood here. And instead of showing the two people kissing, the animation pans up to these two birds that are kissing instead. And people said that they were much more comfortable with this image. So by testing each image in the country, we were able to make sure that the educational materials we were designing, even though the base curriculum was identical, 
will still customize to meet their own needs. And so this process is not easy. Oh, it took us several years working with an inter interdisciplinary team of experts at Stanford University across disciplines. So we worked with doctors in the medical school, educators, public health experts, communication experts to really figure out not only the science of what we were explaining, but how can we now make it comfortable? And the really incredible thing happened. We posted the tools we had created online so people could use them for free. And we started receiving emails from around the world from people saying, we want HIV education like this. There's nothing in our country like this. There's nothing in our language like this. You know, people are dying in our communities and we don't know what to do. Can you help us? And so as we started hearing from people around the world, we realized that we needed to make sure that we could create this, this material in different languages looking appropriate for the different cultures. One. So, oops. my slides appear to have not been functioning, but it, essentially what we started to do was to look further into each community to figure out how we could really ensure that we were creating the materials. So in India, we started working with the local celebrities, the Bollywood stars, and it might seem like we picked this because celebrities are glamorous. But actually, as we did more research, we learned that for sensitive topics like HIV, people feel more comfortable when they learn about this material from someone they trust, like a, a respected figure in their community. And so, um, we wanted to ensure that we were able to meet people like this. Additionally, as we were doing research, we discovered that the gender matters. So people prefer to learn about sensitive material from someone of their own gender. So we started creating two versions. In the male version, you have a male doctor talking to a male student explaining this information. And then in a female version that is almost identical, you have a female doctor explaining to a female student. That way when you're working with certain populations in your classroom or in NGOs, you're able to um, use the version that is better suited for your audience. Ms. Michelle, we cannot yeah. see your slide. So would you share again your slide? We cannot see yeah. your slide. One second. OK. It seems to have frozen. Let me see if. Is there anyone? Just a second. So you can control. Can you see them okay. now? Yeah, stories around the world. OK, thank you. Please go ahead. So as I was describing for India, we started to use the celebrities. And so what we decided to do, India is such a large country that each state is like its own country. So we decided to focus on Andhra Pradesh, which is a state in the south of India that has about 84 million people and which has the highest levels of stigma in all of India. And we said in this state, where just a few years ago, HIV positive students were expelled from their schools, how can we make these materials accessible? In a state where people do not use the HIV educational materials provided by their own national government, how do we create educational materials that they're comfortable with? And so here we use these local celebrities and we partnered with the local AIDS organization and we developed the version in their local language of Telugu. And then we printed 25,000 copies of the animation, which were distributed into their schools and NGOs and counseling centers. And in fact, the materials became so popular that they were shown on television several times, um, especially around World AIDS Day. So now every World AIDS Day, some of the TV stations have elected to use our materials to promote awareness. Um, I also wanted to share a story from Botswana, because Africa in general, but Botswana in particular, is the opposite problem of India. So in India, it's very difficult, there's stigma, there's taboo, people are not comfortable talking about HIV. In Botswana, almost one in four people are infected with HIV, 23%. It is one of the highest percentages in the world. And so here, they have too much information, they're tired of all of the information about HIV, and they stop listening. So we were approached by the former president of Botswana, Festus Mohai, and he said, we need something new and engaging for our community. What we have isn't working. Can you create these materials in our local language of Setswana and also an English version because we have many people who speak English. 
And they said, we don't have big movie stars here. Our celebrities are the music artists, and everyone knows these musicians. So we partnered with them, and we met with the local musicians who said, yes, we would love to donate our voices to this cause. We would love to contribute to your animation, because HIV is a huge problem in our country, and we don't feel like anything is working, even though we've been trying so hard. So in Botswana, we then worked with them to also customize the animation. As you can see here, we ensured that the characters were designed to look like the local people. And you can see how we had to go through many different designs before they picked the one. In fact, an interesting story, something that seems so simple, is that the student character was originally wearing um, this, this uniform color that you see in the image. But when we showed them to the ones, the students in Botswana, they said, there are no school uniforms in our country that are that, con that color. That doesn't look like it's from our, our country at all. So ultimately, we actually changed the uniform color to a yellow color that was popular in several of the schools in the country. And while this might seem like a very small thing to do, when the students watched the animations, they told us that they really liked them because it felt like it represented them and that, you know, that information was relevant to them. Because when you think it, the characters look like someone else, you also think that the problem is someone else's and you don't think that the problem applies to you. So as we've gone into each country, we found different problems and we've discovered that no two countries are alike. But now that we've developed this interactive HIV education curriculum that we can use in every place, all we need to do now is work and translate it into the local languages and then just customize some of the visual components such as what the characters look like and what some of the backgrounds look like so that it can be comfortable for those students. So we're now working and we've identified the top 50 countries that would benefit most based on their HIV infection rate, the number of people who are infected, whether or not HIV is a stigma or taboo in that country, whether or not there's a lot of other reasons why it might be a hot zone for HIV to increase. And we're now going to make 80 to 90 new language versions so that we can get these 50 countries and that will be 90% of the world's HIV infected population. So we are hopeful that by taking the time to meet with and speak with people in each community, we can really make a lasting impact in their education. Um, so I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about Teach AIDS in our process or anything else you would like to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your excellent presentation. And uh, also I really appreciate your uh, or your group, uh, grassroots experience on AIDS. Mm -hmm. with a vast area of countries, even though 70, 70, not institutions, 70 countries, unbelievable. Yeah. So I am wondering at this time, how do you raise your fund, your budget to support all the countries, uh, even you uh, uh, have given uh, the material for free. So all the fund from the donated or from the government to support all the fund. I'm very wondering about that. That's an excellent question. So the 70 countries, many of them are using our English version, so they're not all countries for which we have created a custom version. But for each country or language for which we create a custom version, we actually work with, um, we get some donations, of course, but we work with corporations who are interested in doing corporate social responsibility in their own community. So often these corporations have already allocated a budget for what is now you know, very commonly called CSR. And so if they sponsor a version, then they can get their logo included at the beginning of the animation. And then, you know, every time someone watches it, they see the logo um, without changing the content in any way. Okay, so is there any question from this venue and the remote area? Okay, thank you again uh, uh, for your presence, even though huge time difference from here <laughs> to your country. Thank you again. Thank and you. we move.